my journey to landscape architecture started uh, in you know growing up in Louisiana, um, where you know so much of ritual and everyday life happens in public space, um, and absorbing that subconsciously. Um, and then in 2005, actually almost 15 years, almost to the day, in three in three days, it'll be the 15 year anniversary of Hurricane Katrina, um, and that moment. Um, you know, actually maybe started me on my path of trying to understand what disciplines, you know, tackle the kind of mess of uh, political and cultural and ecological and aesthetic um, dimensions that, you know, manifest a Hurricane Katrina and potentially point towards, you know, um, steps to mitigate some of the issues that that, that kind of event um, brings to light. Starting with my landscape architecture education, um, you know, I actually really struggled with understanding how I fit into the field. And that begins with, you know, your, your curriculum begins with history and theory. Um, and I know the significant contributions that people of African descent have made to the technologies and the, the, the cultures of shaping land. So after my first year, of you know a three-year program, I did a summer internship with Walter Hood, and some of you know those questions about how to make relevant different people's cultures and experiences in the practice of landscape architecture started to become clearer, at least that potential. And I had a project, thesis project that I was interested in pursuing, um, which had to do with a site um, that has a really interesting material culture related to the transatlantic slave trade. I was told that it was a project that wasn't relevant to landscape architecture. When I was you know, questioning about how I could pursue my interests and also you know, be taken seriously as a designer, I had somebody um, as an advisor who really encouraged me to, to pursue that really difficult um, task. Um, and that was Anita Beresbetia. And, um, you know, she, she really propelled me towards, towards, you know, moving in that direction and feeling like it's possible, like maybe there's not an obvious space for you. You know, there's not a, you know, a, a lot of precedents or models, but make one. The percentage of licensed landscape architects that are black women is 0.02%. I think there's, you know, there's landscape architecture, the discipline, and then there's the practice of shaping land. And the practice of shaping land is expansive and endless, and it spans time, it spans the globe. And if we as a landscape architecture discipline can build the methods, grow the methods to identify the significance of people shaping land, um, I think we can start to you know, expand the precedence within the discipline. I mean, Olmsted is interesting because I think his text in the South is actually, he make, makes it very clear about who are the stewards of the land and they are the enslaved people. You know, he, he's very clear about that. They are the protagonists here of the land. And um, that's, you know, really the, the crux of his writing is making that very clear. Um, but that's not how we historicize the landscapes. So Olmsted is like the most, he is the most cited witness of 19th century slavery um, among historians. And that's like, an, it's an incredible, it's an incredible feat. Like this is, you know, outside of this practice of landscape architecture, which we all know before. Um, and so the, the text that he has is, a, is actually really important to the history of landscape architecture to understand, I mean, very few people have really witnessed the breadth and depth of, of, uh, of slavery that he did. And so he's unique in that way. And so the text is, you know, for me, I've really been thinking about the text as a methodological proposition for landscape architecture, how landscape architects can operate, you know, thinking about larger political and social contexts, but then, you know, zoom in and toggle in on the site scale and design a project like a central park. Beyond a methodological proposition, though, it's an important historical document that helps us understand the contribution of enslaved people, of people of African descent, 
and women of African descent. Um, they, they really are um, characterized in his text as very powerful stewards of the land. I am doing everything I can to, to bend that arc. And um, that is why I am a practitioner, uh, because I think having physical landscapes to point to, to say a black woman, you know, design that.